An Indian defense consulting group conducted an interactive war game to develop a roadmap for aero engine ecosystem in India that saw participation of retired scientists from DRDO and ISRO, and representatives from several firms like Hindustan Aeronautics and Bharat Forge. It was concluded that co-development of jet engine with a foreign partner would not result in new designs or modification and upgrade capability, and India would need to continue its efforts to develop indigenous engines in mission mode. It was also concluded that the lack of testing infrastructure in India caused a delay of six years in the cavalry engine development. It was also concluded that indigenizing gas turbine engines would save around 300,000 crore rupees in the next 20 years. The development of small aero engines which powers UAVs and low-cost cruise missiles should be developed by a consortium of DRDO working with two private sector companies, and resilient supply chains must be built for them, as the Indian market for small engines for the next 20 years would be over 61,000 crore rupees. According to a media report, Hindustan Aeronautics offer of Tejas aircraft has a fair chance of winning the Malaysian tender, as it has met all the parameters sought by Royal Malaysian Air Force. The report also indicates that it is facing some serious competition from the South Korean FA-50, that has been offered at a relatively lower cost of $26.5 million per unit with similar sensor packages, while the Tejas has been offered at $32 million per unit making it the most expensive aircraft that is on offer. South Korea have now offered an off-the-shelf ASA radar and in-flight refueling capability on the FA-50 as demanded by Malaysia, even though they are yet to be tested out. The DRDO and Indian Army have successfully conducted six tests of quick reaction surface-to-air missile system from the integrated test range, as part of evaluation trials by Indian Army. The tests were done against high-speed aerial targets mimicking various aerial threats, to evaluate its capability under different scenarios, including long-range medium altitude, short-range high altitude, against maneuvering target, salvo launch with two missiles fired in quick succession, and it met all the mission objectives during day and night operation scenarios. These tests were conducted in the final deployment configuration, consisting of all indigenously developed subsystems including the missile with indigenous RF seeker, mobile launcher, fully automated command and control system, surveillance and multifunction radar systems. The Swift UCAF technology demonstrator conducted its first flight in July this year, and now the DRDO is all set to start another round of flight test of the Swift by the end of this year. The DRDO plans to conduct 10 more test flights to validate many of the technologies, after which it will prepare a detailed proposal for the development of 13-ton Indian strike unmanned aerial vehicle powered by dry cavalry engine. The DRDO and Indian Air Force will jointly work out an agreeable configuration so that the Indian strike unmanned aerial vehicle can become reality by 2030. Opto Electronics Factory, which is a unit of the newly formed India Optel Limited, has successfully developed indigenous thermal imaging based driver's night sight for BMP2 infantry fighting vehicle, in collaboration with the RDO's Instruments Research and Development Establishment. The Indian Air Force is preparing to establish another base in Ladakh, as the Standing Committee of the National Board of Wildlife has given approval to the proposal. The defense project is yet to apply for environmental clearance for the base which falls in the cold desert sanctuary, but it would hardly be a roadblock for this border security project. The Pentagon has announced that the U.S. State Department has approved the potential sale of F-16 sustainment and related equipment to Pakistan, in a deal valued at up to $450 million, and that the proposed sale will support the foreign policy and national security objectives of the United States by allowing Pakistan to retain interoperability with U.S. and partner forces in ongoing counter-terror efforts. The proposed sale does not include any new capabilities weapons or munitions. Oh, my God.
Oh, Mark, drop it.